from historic mining communities saturated in legends of paranormal activity to chillingly abandoned coastal villages whose shores are said to be wandered by restless spirits after dark. Are you ready for our second list of picks for some of the most haunted ghost towns in the United States? Number 5. Go Van Go Van, located in Lincoln County in Washington, is a historic ghost town that lies shrouded in infamy following a string of unsolved and rather brutal murders that transpired there. Historically, Govan was established in 1889 and was utilized as a Central Washington Railway Station Point, taking its name after notable company engineer R.B. Govan. In 1890, a large sand bank was discovered in the area, resulting in the community growing as a boomtown around the valued construction resource. In 1898, a post office was established, and in 1906, a schoolhouse was constructed. The community, namely driven off farming, prospered until 1927 when, sadly, a large fire tore through town, destroying many of its original structures and driving most elsewhere. Govan's demise was only furthered in 1933 when it was decided US Route 2 would bypass the town entirely. In 1942, the school was closed down, with the post office following later in 1967. Eventually, nearly all of the area's residents would move on. Today, a good majority of Govan's buildings and homes have been all but demolished by weather and time, though the old schoolhouse and post office can still be viewed. Disturbingly, in 1902, Judge J. A. Lewis, along with his wife, were discovered murdered by axe within their home, a slaying which was recorded as quite possibly the most brutal crime ever committed in the county. The couple kept money at their residence and it suspected the crime may have been robbery related. Just a year later, in 1903, C.S. Thienes was killed by a masked gunman at the Govan Saloon. Finally, in 1941, a local woman was found murdered at her farm around the same time her son went missing. His body was discovered eight years later, far out in the fields. While nearly all of the town's buildings are gone, those who have visited Govan report misty apparitions and shadowy figures throughout its ruins and surrounding expanse, and several chilling accounts tell of instances in which spectral buildings have materialized from thin air. Lastly, reported throughout the area are orbs captured in photographs, abnormal battery death, and the small voices and giggles of children heard near the old school site, and a range of chilling accounts detail disembodied whispers, inexplicable sounds and smells, and the constant feeling of being watched. Number 4. Tahawas Tahawas, located in Essex County in New York, is a former village now holding the title of Ghost Town that sits within the Adirondack Park, a prominent forest preserve in the northeastern portion of the state. Historically, Adirondack, New York was founded as a company town, purposed to suit the Adirondack Ironworks, following the discovery of nearby iron deposits in 1826 by Archibald McIntyre and David Henderson. From 1827 to 1857, iron was extracted at what was then known as the Upper Works with moderate success. But following 1857, along with a series of business troubles, local flooding, and a nationwide economic crisis, the village was eventually left abandoned. For around two decades, Tahawas was utilized as a convenient shelter by hunters, anglers, and those exploring the area. In 1876, one James R. Thompson of Adirondack Ironworks would form the Preston Ponds Club, later leasing the land from the company. And in 1898, the organization would rename itself as the Tahawas Club. In 1940, a titanium dioxide mine was opened about a mile south of the original town site, and in 1943, a new community by the same name was established. 
Unfortunately, this new mine site saw a similar decline, halting operations by 1989 and leaving Tahawas all but abandoned. Today, the remnants of several buildings are open to the public, with most visible construction holding build dates from between 1890 and 1930. A number of stories of the supernatural have emerged from this aged ghost town, with many visiting reporting disembodied voices, otherworldly sounds in the skies, footsteps from empty buildings, and extreme hot and cold spots. Inexplicable lantern lights are often sighted floating about vacant structures, and shadowy entities have been spied slinking about. Lastly, a famous urban legend tells that once upon a time, long ago, a man worked for the town's oldest mining operation and rose in rank to a management position. It said this man was cruel and harsh to his employees, working several to death, and that, after years of torture, one or possibly all of them acting together turned on their vile boss, taking his life. A number of accounts detail run-ins with an angry apparition, often on horseback, believed to be the spirit of this evil man that's been known to chase the living at great lengths. Number 3. Toya Toya, located about two hours east of El Paso in Texas, is a community labeled as a dying populace, or more aptly as an inevitable ghost town that's recognized for being the oldest town site in Reeves County. As history has it, in 1880, one W.T. Youngblood settled into the area with his family, quickly setting up a small store while peddling goods to local ranchers. As the locality's population grew, by 1881, its first train had arrived, and a post office was established later the very same year. Boasting a number of tent villages, makeshift saloons, and restaurants, Toya would welcome the A.M. Fields Hotel in 1886, and its first schoolhouse later in 1894. In 1910, the town's population would hit its peak at just over 1,000 residents. And two years later, in 1912, a new school was established to accommodate all grades. Sadly, by the 1930s, Toya's populace had been cut nearly in half, courtesy of the Great Depression and lost shipping lines. And by the 1950s, both the local bank and school had shut down for good. Further adding to its decline, in 2004, a tornado ripped through town, destroying much of what was left. Today, the town lies in ruin, with most buildings still standing left abandoned entirely. Chillingly, Toya is rumored to play home to an infestation of ghostly children with blackened eyes. Some claim actual black-eyed children from lore. These entities have been encountered most often near the old schoolhouse, and have even been blamed for the town's dying out in the first place. Those who've explored Toya's bounds after dark have described harrowing instances in which they've noticed the forms of these spectral children staring at them ominously from the school, and a handful of accounts tell of motorists stopping for mere seconds, glancing up, and realizing their vehicles are completely surrounded by these unearthly things. Also reported throughout Toya are half-formed silhouettes in the backgrounds of photography, shadowy figures that stalk lone adventurers, and the constant feeling that someone or something is always lurking just out of sight. Lastly, encountered through town is a bright orb of light that's been known to zip up and down the streets erratically after sundown. Disturbingly, many who have come into contact with this ball of energy have reported developing health problems shortly afterwards. Number 2. Goldfield Goldfield, located near Apache Junction in Penal County, Arizona, is a historic mining town turned tourist attraction. That superstition narrow gauge railroad boasts the title of being the only operational three foot narrow gauge in the state. Historically, Goldfield sprouted up in 1893 following the discovery of gold on the Superstition Mountains, with its post office opening later the same year. 
as its population grew, a hotel, general store, church, and schoolhouse were quickly established. At its peak, Goldfield played home to around 4,000 residents. But sadly, when the mine faulted in 1897, a majority of its populace was out of work. As the town suffered, most began moving elsewhere, and eventually, in 1898, the post office was closed down. In 1910, several new mines were opened up nearby, coupled with a mill and a cyanide plant, and a community called Youngberg after George U. Young slowly sprouted up around the old ghost town. These new mines would face similar hardships, however, and would end up faulting in 1926, after which Goldfield was left abandoned once more. In 1984, one Robert F. Schuess, along with his wife, Lou Ann, would purchase the town site with the intent of rebuilding and reopening it. The couple would go on to reopen the town to the public as the Goldfield Ghost Town and Mine Tours Incorporated. The Goldfield Ghost Town remains open to the public to this day, offering mine tours, a history museum, reenactments, and, according to local legend, its fair share of resident haunted. Hauntings. Goldfield is thought to be haunted by the restless souls of the many who lived and died within its bounds. And additionally, the Superstition Mountains, or the Devil's Playground according to earlier native peoples, are believed to be magnets for the strange and otherworldly. Chillingly, many have gone searching the region for gold, never to be seen again. Throughout Goldfield, many report shadowy figures that dart about, orbs visible to the naked eye, and full-bodied apparitions sighted through windows, seemingly going about daily lives long past. Disembodied voices are often heard from closed buildings, the sound of phantom bootsteps is all but common, and visitors often describe hearing gunshots when no reenactments are in session. In the old saloon, the ghost of a woman in old-fashioned clothing is often sighted behind the counter, and a number of staff members that frequent the area have reported hearing a soft female voice calling to them when they are completely alone. Lastly, the apparition of a cowboy has been encountered in and near the old bordello. This rough rider has been known to growl at the living, frighten visitors with supernatural pranks, and even grab, hit, or scratch visitors when upset. Number 1. Garnet Garnet, located off of the entirely dirt Garnet Range Road in the Garnet Mountains just east of Missoula, Montana, is a ghost town widely recognized as being one of the state's most intact examples from the era. Historically, the town formed in 1895 when one Dr. Armistead Mitchell erected a nearby stamp mill to crush local ores. As the mill grew in popularity, a small community called Mitchell formed around it, and just two years later, in 1897, this locality would change its name to Garnet due to the stone's unusually common presence throughout the area. By 1898, Garnet boasted an impressive four stores, four hotels, three stables, two barbers, a union hall, a school, a doctor's office, a variety of shops and saloons, and an impressive populace of 1,000. Sadly, however, as the flow of gold began to slow, by 1905, a good majority of local mining operations had been abandoned entirely, and all but 150 residents remained. Further sealing the town's fate, in 1912, a large fire tore through Garnet, destroying nearly half of its structures, damages that were ultimately never repaired. The community saw a small revival in 1934, when President Roosevelt doubled the price of gold, but World War II would halt mining productions, and by the 1950s, Garnet was officially a ghost town. In 2010, Garnet's 134 acres were added to the National Register of Historic Places as the Garnet Historic District. Today, the site is owned by the U.S. Bureau of Land Management, hosts an estimated 16,000 visitors annually, and offers a range of hiking and biking trails, campsites, hunting and fishing options, and events, including an official Garnet Day get-together.
Local legend tells the entirety of Garnet is haunted by the many who lived and died there, namely by those who poured their hearts and souls into the mine and town only to watch it fall apart. Activity is said to get more intense through the winter months when the area is all but deserted, with caretakers and volunteers reporting finding fresh boot prints in the snow when no one else is around for miles, and with no logical start or end points. At Garnet, many report strange lights within buildings that should be empty, shadowy figures that dart about after dark, and full-bodied apparitions in old-fashioned clothing, including those of spectral miners whose lights are often spied through the surrounding forests. The Old Wells Hotel is rumored to be haunted by several presences, with those who have visited describing disembodied footsteps in the hallways, doors that open and close by themselves, and the entity of a woman who's commonly spied gazing from the upper windows. Several informal investigations of Garnet have yielded high EMF levels, EVPs, orbs and strange mists in photography, and the constant feeling of being watched by someone or something unseen, and the number of terrifying tales in which individuals have heard whispering emanating from right behind them, or were even tapped, grabbed, or pushed by an invisible force. Also reported from the area are vehicles refusing to start, batteries dying at abnormal rates, and unsettling experiences in which visitors encounter ghostly children who they mistake for living, who look lost and are usually calling out for help. Those who have rushed to these small specters' aid are always met in disappointment as they quickly fade into nothingness. Lastly, Kelly's Saloon is rumored to be the most haunted stop in town, and many visiting have reported sighting objects moving on their own, a piano that plays itself, and the sounds of disembodied music, laughter, and glasses clinking together, as if some version of life long lost still exists within the building, just beyond the veil. Coupling this creepy old community's fascinating history with its ridiculously active and horrifying list of hauntings, we felt Garnet was the perfect choice as our pick for the most haunted ghost town in America. Thanks for tuning in to our second list of picks for some of the most haunted ghost towns in America. If you enjoyed hearing our histories and ghost stories as much as we enjoyed telling them to you, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and turn notifications on so you know when fresh content is on the way. Throw us a like if you feel we've earned it and, most importantly, share this video and our channel with anyone you think deserves a good scare. We'll see you next time.